Welcome to another exciting lesson of music listening. We are in week 18 and we are going to be talking about active listening. Now, what is active listening? First of all, we must understand the term music analysis so that we may listen to music actively. Active listening requires a good analysis of the music. We call this music analysis. Music analysis can be divided into two important sections, namely deconstruct and evaluate. To deconstruct means to identify the following. Musical elements, how they've been used by the artist, pitch, rhythm, timber. We have discussed this in elements of music. Compositional devices, repetition, sequence, inversion, randomness, serialism, etc. You should also identify if or how these two things relate to each other. For instance, maybe each time the music repeats, the artist plays more softly. Or maybe every time we go to the chorus, the band slightly picks up the tempo. You must understand how they relate. Now, you must also be able to evaluate, which means make judgments about how everything above relates to one, the context of the song, time, place, history, production values, etc. The genre of the song, is it pop, is it rock, etc. The style of the song or the composer's style, is it fun, sexy, epic, silly, carefree, intense, etc. Now, we also must know how to navigate through the music. Yes, we can deconstruct the music and then evaluate it. But how are we going to do that? Now, with the guide to music analysis, it shows us what questions to ask or to ask ourselves when we are listening to a piece of music so that we can analyze it properly. First of all, it's the medium. Medium. Why did the composer choose the instrumentation or orchestration? Is the instrumentation traditional to the style? Are the voices? What are the colors of sounds you hear? Do the instruments or voices sound like they are in the extremes of their ranges? Are they bright or brittle sounding? Are they warm or dark? That's the medium. Another point will be meter, tempo, rhythm. Can you find the heartbeat of the music? Can you tap to it? How many weak beats are there between the strong beats? Does this piece remind you of a dance, maybe? If so, what kind? What is the speed of the music? Now, as I said in previous slides that we can not always be able to determine the tempo, but we can classify tempos in different sections. For instance, if it's slow or if it's fast, if it's medium paced. Does the speed change? Maybe when you get to the chorus, does it get more fast? Does the speed affect the way the music feels? In orchestration for music, you can hear that the music must be dramatic to fit the scene of the movie. Is there a prevalent rhythmic feature that, okay, that reoccurs? Can you clap or sing it? Can you describe it another way? Is there ever a rhythmic or dance-like character to the accompaniment, melodic support? Can you describe it? So that's what we are talking about when we are talking about meter or time signatures, tempo and rhythm. Now we come to the harmony. What is the emotional content of the music? Do you think it's exciting? Do you think it's sad? Do you think maybe it's major? or minor. So why do you think so? Cite examples from the piece to support your conclusion. Is there a way the chords move easy to anticipate or the notes 
ever just jar against each other? Does the accompaniment sound open? Notes spaced far apart or close? Notes close together. Where are the tenth moments in the music? Where are the parts that feel more at rest or peaceful? Now we go to the melody. What is the melody? Is it ornamented at some point? For instance, does it have trills? Or maybe does it have appoggiaturas? If so, what is the ornamentation? What is the contour of the melody? Does it move to a downward slope or does it go up a lot? Does it ascend, descend, remain static, meaning it's not really moving? Is there a form to it? If so, can you describe it? Is the melody smooth, angular? What is the character of the melody? Aggressive, placid, mournful, jubilant. What makes you think so? So you use an example from the music. Is there ever more than one melody playing at once? Maybe there's a, another contrasting melody in the background. Does the melody ever exist without accompaniment? Is it monophonic? Could the accompaniment parts be referred to melodies? Those are the things you look at. Then another thing, repetition and form is a melodic or rhythmic figure that you hear more than once. Is there a harmonic figure that repeats more than once? Is there a pattern to it? Can you describe the pattern? Why might the composer have used or not used this pattern? Does the composer change the melody or harmony? Describe how. Does the music feel like it increases in tension or decreases? For instance, you know, when I think about music analysis, I think about what a movie would look like or what a movie usually consists of. It's got a beginning, a middle and an end. Does it end bad? Does it end good? Do we have a hero that constantly comes into play? So those are the things that consist in the music and we can be able to analyze a piece of music using all these questions. So going back to repetition and form, can you describe the arc from the tension and back to relaxation? Can you describe where these events happen in the music? Does the accompaniment change or remain the same through the whole piece? Does the accompaniment ever echo the melody? Meaning, does it always, or rather, is it similar to the music in the background? Then we come to texture. How do the other instruments or voices support the melody? Are they all playing at once? Do they play patterns that repeat? Do they play the same thing or are they all different? Do any of them lock up, meaning play at the same time, or play the same thing for the moment and then unlock? Does the accompaniment ever draw attention to itself and away from the melody? How so? How complicated is the accompaniment? Does the accompaniment sound happy, or sad, etc.? Why? Are the moments where there is no sound meaning silence. Remember, we spoke about rest in topic one. Do the musicians sound as if they are being very articulate, mumbling or sliding between the notes, jagged, smooth? So the texture is how everything comes together, the melody and the harmony. Can you compare the two? Then we have tonality. In this section, it makes reference to modality of the music. Modality meaning is it major sounding or is it minor? Is it modal, atonal, polytonal, etc. And then lastly, we have the lyrics and miscellaneous. What makes this music Cuban? Maybe it's in Spanish, Puerto Rican, classical, jazz, etc. 
What features or links in this piece are the same as the last piece we listened to? So you can make a comparison if we listen to a classical piece or maybe we listen to a jazz piece, you can compare the two. For instance, there are uh, jazz pieces that are an adaptation of a classical piece. What links do they have? Where would this piece have been performed? On a stage maybe? In the theater? Or in the house maybe? Or at the doctor's waiting room? Anyway, how would people have listened to it? What language is the piece in, if there is one, and why? How important is the text? Was the text written for the piece? Maybe it was a poem that was written and then they added accompaniment to it. Is there a form to the text? Does it go back to the same line? Or does it go back to the same phrase? Can you describe it? Does the music form align with the contextual form? Maybe if there's a line or a phrase that you repeat, does the melody and the harmony repeat with it? Does the musical form align with the contextual form? Is it syllabic, meaning one syllable per word? or melismatic, many notes per syllable. Does the piece sound old or more contemporary? What features or sounds make it sound that way? So all of these have got to do with music analysis. It's the questions that you ask yourself when you listen to a piece of music so that we may understand what the composer was trying to say. I am sure it is easier when a song has lyrics. But what about the songs that don't have lyrics? Then they are trying to communicate to you an emotion. How will you know it's sad? How will you know it's exciting or it's epic? So all of these that I mentioned from the previous slides, tonality, lyrics, the texture, repetition and form, melody, all these things, they help us understand music analysis so that we can listen to the music actively. <laughs>